Welcome back to the coaching and discussion lectures. Today we are going to talk about VO2 max and what VO2 max is. VO2 max is the maximum oxygen consumption of the human body. It's the aerobic capacity, the maximum engine that we have as humans. Um, so generally speaking, uh, it is defined as the maximum amount of oxygen in milliliters an athlete can use in one minute per kilogram of body weight. That is the technical term for VO2 max. So when we talk about VO2 max, it can be increased through training and through harder workouts, uh, factoring in um, heart and strength and uh, different types of variables that lead to how strong the circulatory system is. There are many different factors in VO2 max. With VO2 max, Generally speaking, the higher VO2 max that you have, the stronger aerobic capacity and stronger aerobic system you're going to have. Um, this generally leads to increased performances, not only in endurance sports, but also in recovery times for power sports as well. There are three components of VO2 max. We have oxygen capacity, oxygen transport, and oxygen utilization. We're going to talk about each one. Oxygen capacity. This is how much air you can breathe in. So how much air can you breathe in? Can you bring it, breathe in to the very end? Can you sip just a little bit more air? How much residual air can you breathe out? And then how quickly can you bring that air back in? And then how do you improve your lung capacity? So oxygen capacity comes down to what is your lung capacity? How much air can you physically hold in your lungs that can be transferred from the lungs into the circulatory system? This is number one. There are many musicians do, uh, do exercises that help with lung capacity. They can breathe in as much as they can, then they take little sips at a time and try to improve how much capacity that they have. Athletes can do the same thing. So generally speaking, harder workouts, VO2 max workouts, help with oxygen capacity, help with lung capacity, just in a natural sense. So this is one of the components for VO2 max. The next component is oxygen transport. Oxygen transport is how much oxygen your circulatory system can carry at any one given time. Now, how do you improve your circulatory system? One is just plain workouts, doing harder workouts to improve how much oxygen that you're starved of and how much oxygen your body has to scramble to use during a workout. So that is easily the best way that you can improve your circulatory system. Now, you can also improve oxygen transport through something called high altitude training. Uh, you go to California, uh, or not California, but uh, you go to Colorado, and you go to Denver, which is at 5,200 feet, um, or you go to Colorado Springs, which is much higher at about 7,000 feet, and you live higher. The air is thinner, there's less oxygen, and so your body has to adapt in order to learn how to deal with less oxygen in the air. And so that is called high altitude training. Now, when you come back down from 7,000 feet back to sea level, there are many accounts that it increases performance, especially as you come back down to sea level or come back down a few thousand feet. So high altitude training does help with that. There are machines that you can be hooked up to uh, that will mimic high altitude training. But generally speaking, a lot of athletes go out to train in Boulder and Denver and Colorado Springs uh, near the Olympic Training Center so that they have that capacity and have that edge in terms of oxygen transport. Another way you can improve oxygen transport is by blood doping. This is illegal in sport. Um, do not do blood doping. I'm not condoning you do blood doping, but it is a way that you can improve your oxygen capacity or oxygen transport. So it's something that is frowned, frowned upon for, for sports and something that you should not do. But I would like you to know that it does exist to improve this component of VO2 max. 
And the third component of VO2 max, we have oxygen utilization, which is how much oxygen that you can use in your muscles at any one given time. I'm sorry, I actually did not change this slide. I'm very upset with myself. So it does. this talks about circulatory system. Oxygen utilization talks about how much oxygen a specific muscle can use. So this is typically where the bottleneck comes in, where cyclists will use a lot of oxygen in their glutes and their quadriceps, whereas runners will use more oxygen generally speaking, in hamstrings and calves, and then you have swimmers who utilize more oxygen in the upper body, in the lats, in the back, and in the pectorals, in the chest. Um, now, granted, all three sports use all of those muscles, but there's different percentages of what muscles that you're using. So a swimmer who, ha who may have, especially an endurance swimmer, who has great oxygen utilization in the lats or the back, they might also have a high oxygen transport and high oxygen capacity. But if they switch over to cycling, they're going to have to learn how to utilize oxygen more effectively in the quadriceps, the hamstrings, and the glutes. And so that is oxygen utilization as a whole. Um, that is the third component of VO2 max. It's general, uh, generally the bottleneck for VO2 max. Uh, is this sport-specific issue with oxygen utilization. So, how do you improve VO2 max? Here's two workouts that I'd like to do with my classes quite a bit. Is you do 13 intervals, and if you're running, that might be 200 meters. If you're swimming, that might be 25 yards. With my classes, my... Cl uh, our cl my classes are more on the beginner scale and needs to accommodate everyone from beginner ability levels to more advanced. So I go with more 200 meters and 25 yards. You can make this um, you can make this slightly different to where you go more towards 400 meters or 800 meters for the run and 50 yards to 100 yards for the swim. So it can become more difficult by adding. Uh, distance to the intervals. They're at fast paces. So the run is at your one mile pace, the swim might be at your 200 or 400 pace. Um, and what you're doing is you're doing 60 seconds rest to start with. It's a long rest. You're standing there or, or just kind of floating there for a long time, 60 seconds. And then you do another interval and you go down to diminishing rest, five seconds each, and you go down to 55 seconds. And then the next interval, you go down to 50. The next interval, you go down to 45, then 40, then 35, then 30, then 25, then 20, 15, 10, and then fi finally five seconds rest. You hit the wall, you count to five, you push back off the wall. Um, this type of workout allows uh, beginners to actually push themselves much harder because it slowly increases in intensity rather than pushing all out from the very beginning of the workout. So it gradually increases intensity where it, you start to feel that claustrophobic feeling that you do with a hard workout. So great workout to improve VO2 max, especially for the beginners. Uh, so definitely check those out. I'm going to be doing those in class uh, either this week and next week. And then we have our summary, all right? So we talked about VO2 max. It's your aerobic capacity. It's a maximum amount of oxygen that you can contain. A higher VO2 max equals a larger engine or a larger aerobic capacity. General, generally, higher performances come with a higher VO2 max. There are three components of VO2 max. It's oxygen capacity or lung capacity, oxygen transport or how efficient your circulatory system is and how much oxygen you can hold there, and oxygen utilization, which is all very sport-specific and muscle-specific, depending on if you're a swimmer, a cyclist, or a runner. There's a little chart to the right to give you some, uh, some information. Um, VO2 max does drop 1%. A year as we age and that's a very important reason that we need to keep consistent with our training all the way through our lives we don't stop when we're younger uh, we want to push our vo2 max as we get older uh, so so that's just a little chart for you um, 
but just some supplementary information. So this is very surface of the uh, scratching the surface of VO2 max, but I wanted to give you some information on why we train the way we do. We want to do a VO2 max workout. We want to develop that particular skill and that particular aerobic capacity versus endurance versus muscular endurance. Um, this is much more that high intensity, maximum amount of oxygen that your body can redline at. So that is, uh, that is the summary for the VO2 max discussion. We will see you back here for our next lecture. Thanks for tuning in.